Hey everyone, Fubo TV reported quarterly financial results on November 3rd and the initial reaction from the stock market was favorable. You can see the stock price jumping from a little less than a little, around $2.70 per share, jumping all the way up to $3.15 before coming back down to $3.07. But remember, if we take a longer perspective, if we look at the three-year stock price of Fubo TV, you'll see that it's absolutely down big time from $60 per share all the way down to $3 per share with an enterprise value of 900 million which is down from 6 billion. So in this video I'm going to review Fubo TV's latest quarterly financial results and I'm going to update my recommendation of Fubo TV stock. Coming into the quarter I did not have the stock rated as a buy. I had it closer on the borderline of a hold and a sell. So you're going to want to see if I'm updating or changing that recommendation. So let's jump right into the quarterly results. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now. Starting with management's commentary saying that looking ahead, they believe they have both sufficient liquidity to fund their current operating plan and the momentum necessary in our business to achieve our pa positive cash flow goal in 2025. So again, they're reiterating this target to be positive cash flow in 2025. That remains to be seen if they will hit that target. I, uh, I think they can hit that target if they continue with this focus on profitability. They've implemented a few solid decisions, namely raising prices and cutting expenses. And that should get them closer to profitability and positive cash flow. Although at what cost? I'm curious at how much growth will slow down and growth has already slowed down, but how much more will growth slow down and how many customers will they lose if they keep raising prices and cutting content costs? So that remains to be seen. So in the third quarter, Fubo TV revenue increased by 43% to $321 million, and the net loss on the bottom line shrunk to $84.4 million. That was down 20%, a solid improvement year over year with the net loss margin improving from negative 47% to negative 26%. Again, I don't mind companies, growth companies losing money on the bottom line so long as they demonstrate progress towards profitability and Fubo TV is demonstrating progress towards profitability in reducing the losses on the bottom line, in reducing the net loss margin on the bottom line. So I mentioned Fubo TV has been raising prices and that's come at the expense of subscriber growth in the third quarter of 2023. Fubo TV ended with 1.477 million subscribers in the North America segment. That was up 20% year over year. That's considerably slower than the company has been growing in previous quarters and in previous years. And that's likely a result of the price increases the company has implemented and a change in consumer spending. Consumers prefer now to spend more money away from home and entertain themselves away from home and that's coming at the expense of some streaming providers slowing the growth in several streaming categories and Fubo is one of them. Average revenue per user jumped by 17% to $83.51. That's up from $71.51 in the same quarter to prior year. Fubo TV has more room to go in terms of increasing prices if they want to bring their business in balance. So they're going to have to continue raising prices and hope that customers stick around despite these price increases. For the fourth quarter, Fubo TV is forecasting revenue above about 1.3 billion for the full year and 385 million for the fourth quarter and they're forecasting to end the year at roughly 1.6 million subscribers. That would be an increase of about 120,000 subscribers from the third quarter. So significantly slower 
growth from Fubo TV. So here's a chart that I've been following with Fubo TV for several years now. And this is the global expenses as a percentage of revenue. And this has consistently been over 100% as the company spends more money than it brings in consistently. But the one category of expense that I pay extra close attention to is the subscriber related expenses here and they showed improvement in this metric bringing it down to 89 percent down from 95 percent again this is the difference between the revenue that fubo tv brings in from subscribers from subscriptions and how much it costs fubo to deliver the content in those subscriptions because remember fubo tv owns very little if any content it it licenses most of its content and so it doesn't own it it has to pay those content providers whether it be sports teams sports leagues or studios like disney for espn and channels like that it has to pay for that and then it charges its customers a price and it hopes that it makes a difference between what it pays to attract to get the rights to the content and what it charges customers for that content and that gap is not very large and this is the one of the reasons why i've been pessimistic about fubo tv and fubo tv as an investment is i don't see this gap widening very much how is fubo tv going to generate strong profitability with this business model where it has to pay content providers for the content and then it charges customers for that content that spread between those two categories how is it going to make a large enough spread in that transaction in order to generate strong profits strong cash flow for its invest for its shareholders especially when it's competing with studios with and companies with much much larger scale like disney and alphabet which also provide a live tv streaming service disney has hulu live tv alphabet has youtube live tv and those companies with their massive scale can spend more on the content they can spend more on the technology they have a lower cost of capital compared to fubo disney especially has lower content expense because it has it's buying the content from itself a lot of content from itself so it can have better economies and scale there so this is a concern with mine and has been a concern of mine with fubo tv so fubo tv mentioning that this is the fourth consecutive quarter we have decreased our subscriber related expenses as a percentage of revenue and we expect this year over year trend to continue as we grow subscriber optimize our pricing in other words raising our pricing and further improve our mix of premium plans so they're working on increasing their pricing as a means of creating that gap between the subscriber related expenses and the uh, money that they're getting from customers but how much can they go how much further can they raise prices on customers before customers just cancel their fubo plan and go to hulu or alphabet or decide that you know what we don't need this uh bundle we can just get individual streaming plans so they've they've got limited pricing power in my opinion but it remains to be seen how much more they can push that pricing power but i agree with management that they have to try this because if they don't then they're just going to continue losing money until they burn through all their money and they go back to investors and investors say we're not giving you any more money we're tired of this right you just keep you're paying more for content you're not charging enough you're just going to keep losing money there is no end to that story so they have to raise prices and prove to investors that they can keep enough customers to sustain the business they have to do that otherwise investors eventually will stop giving fubo tv money because they've burned through billions of dollars already and so they've got to at some point prove to investors and say look we raised prices and we kept this many customers and so at this scale we can operate the business they've got to prove that they haven't done that yet and that's the area i remain skeptical about fubo tv is if they raise their prices 
enough to where they're at least break even, how many customers will they lose? How many customers will they lose? And will they just continue bleeding customers at that point? Will they stop being a growth company at that point? That's where I'm skeptical. I don't think that they can charge customers enough and keep enough customers. But I still think that they need to do that. They need to try to do that because otherwise there is no path forward for this company. So I mentioned the difficulty Fubo is having in operating the business profitably. And what I have here is the third quarter revenue and total expense line items. And what I've highlighted is the total revenue of 320 point nine million and their total operating expenses of 404 million generating an operating loss of 83 million that's better than the 103 million operating loss they generated in the prior year but i've highlighted a few things also look at the subscriber related expenses jumping to 286 million up from 214 million that jumped almost as much as the increase in subscription revenue from 201 million up to 289 million. This is more evidence of that unattractive business model that I highlighted earlier. As Fubo TV adds more subscribers, its subscriber related expenses are going to jump along with it. So the business is not going to demonstrate that economy in scale as uh, lucratively as maybe some other growth businesses would because the business model itself the foundation of it is not built on that kind of economy in scale right revenue grows they have to pay more per su subscriber for the rights to show that content to the subscriber and you could see that here revenue subscription revenue jumped by 88 million subscriber related expenses jumped by 72 million so a 16 million in difference between subscription and subscriber related expenses. But remember embedded in there is the recent price hikes that Fubo TV implemented. So if you exclude the price hike, then the increase in subscriber related expenses would have matched a lot closer the increase of subscription revenue. And so this is where I have difficulty in recommending this stock is because of that lack of inherent economy and scale they're built in yes they're gonna they're making good improvements here in reducing this operating loss but that's coming because they're just slowing down they're slowing down they're raising prices and they're slowing their customer acquisition and slowing the growth so if you are losing a lot more money and you just slow down you slow down your losses right so that's what they're doing and that's what I would like them to do if I was a shareholder in the company I would be happy with the moves that Fubo TV is making but still I wouldn't be convinced until they get to the point where you can see that they can operate the business sustainably and still generate growth even I, I don't know that's where I'm really skeptical and that's where if I was to answer the question is Fubo TV stock a buy I'm still going to say no, the stock is not a buy because of this lack of profitability in the business and the lack of profitability built into the business model. But before I let you go, if you gained any value from this video, please subscribe to the channel. It'll really help me make more videos just like this one.